show Wait, you be made in a ray. A drop of golden. Oh, so I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. Come on, come on. Come on. What? Wait, is this, uh, is this the right side? I was looking for the VIB cost and found a, cr a, a tractor collection of crazy people. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Ronald. Wait, what do you mean crazy? What's with the voice in question? All that stuff. <laughs> it's our pre-show ritual. Mm -hmm. You always miss it. I'm not saying you're always late, but you always miss it. Because you're late. Every time. Yeah, sorry about that. Busy guy, it was an incident with candles and bubble gum. Anyway, what does the ritual do? Oh, so warming up your voice is really, really good for you and calms your nerves. And just having your lines in your head and at least reading through them, that's just so good for your confidence. It's just so much better for a good show or um. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I get the voice warming up in the script reading. I'm not so sure I understand what what she is doing with the flashlight. Shame. Is she okay? Oh no, there's nothing special about the flashlight. Um, then why is she using it in the middle of the day? Oh, that's our ritual. We flash the light on and off and while listening to Steal My Show by Toby Mac. The song's a real hard one. It moves me. We listen to the words and remind ourselves that we're not the ones in the spotlight. We invite God to steal our show and teach the children through us. The flashlight is a visual reminder of who we, the spotlight should be on. Jesus, we pray that you will steal our show, that the spotlight would be on you. I see the kids are here. Are you guys ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? We're live in five, four, three, two. So the people of God, the people he was developing for himself, 
lived in Egypt for a very long time. And over that time, they grew and they became strong. And eventually, they became a bit of a threat to the Egyptians. And Pharaoh said, actually, perhaps we need to get rid of some of these Israelites because they're a bit scary. And God raised a man called Moses to, and said to Moses, Moses, we are going to get my people out of Egypt. It is time for us to go towards that promised land I promised you. And you know the story of Moses. He leads God's people out of, out of Egypt after 10 horrible plagues. They go through the Red Sea parted and into the desert. Now God alone with his people. And it's here in the desert that God sets up the laws and the rules for his people. That was quite an introduction, Angel. <laughs> no offense, but it took you forever to get to the rule of part about the rules. Oh, I'm not offended, Togo. I did that on purpose. We need to know about God's promise and his intention to have a people set aside for him to understand the rules he gave them for them to be holy like he is holy. The first rules were 10 very special ones that we call the 10 commandments. And then there were many, many other rules, hundreds of rules, rules about how you shouldn't shave your beard, all the way through to rules about not eating pork. Hold up, no pork, no bacon, this is not okay. Does he know that he's a rhino? That's <laughs> vegan. That's even worse, I'm vegan. You have to understand that there are two different kinds of laws written in those first books of the Bible. Some are ethical laws and some are ritual laws. Let me explain. Ethical laws are the ones that put out how we should behave, how we should be nice to each other, what kindnesses we should show. Laws like obey your father and mother is an ethical law. And then there were some other rules that were ritual laws. Laws that showed that the people of God were separate, set aside. Laws that were more about reminding them of something important. Reminding them that they were God's special people. When they didn't eat pork, when they didn't cut their beards, it was to show that they belonged to God. To remind themselves daily that they were his special people set aside for him. Of course, we have rules on our set that are ethical, like be nice to each other, learn lines. But we also have rituals, like this thing we do with the flash light and the do donuts before the show. Don't! Uh, I miss donuts! <laughs> we must go yeah. on next time. Togo is exactly right. Some rules are about doing the right thing, and some rules are more of a reminder of something bigger, something we don't want to forget. When God told the Israelites not to eat bacon, it was them setting themselves apart. God showing them that they are his special people and him building up his kingdom in the Old Testament. So the rhino should eat bacon if he wants to be set apart for God, but perhaps refrain from partaking in meat seeing as he is a herbivore. There is a truth! Okay, we'll get to where the tr um, rod was allowed to eat bacon. But for now, it's important to remember that when we read the Bible, we must first understand what God was saying to the original audience. It's not wise to read the VIB and immediately ask, how is this about me? Before we've asked, how is this about the people it was written to originally? It's the responsible interpretive journey through reading scripture. Nice, Joe! Along with all the laws, God carefully explained to the Hebrews what the penalty was of breaking those laws. If you read the laws only from our perspective, yeah. that penalty might seem very severe to you. Like if you called a friend a name, you might be um, subject to death. So we have to ask, what did that mean to the original audience? 
And what is the bigger truth that it shows? Well, the bigger truth is that God is holy. There is no darkness, no badness in him. The Old Testament covenant came to show all of mankind that God is so holy, he cannot ignore even the smallest bit of unholiness. Those poor Hebrews, I couldn't even remember their holy laws, let alone keep them. Mm -hmm. Is it even fair? What did they get if they did well on the laws? What would they get? Well, remember, it's kind of the other way around. Not what would they get if they did well on the rules, but why would they follow the rules? You remember that a covenant is a promise that works both ways. God made a covenant with Abraham. He said he would be their God, give them special blessing, give them a land, care for them, protect them. And in return, they would follow his ways. But you are right, Tobal. It was impossible for those Hebrews to follow the rules. It was impossible for any man to follow all those rules perfectly. It still is. So God figured it all, figured that all out, realized he had been too strict and turned a blind eye and let everyone eat bacon? No, no. Remember, God cannot stop being holy. Hmm. Why would God give many man rules he knew they couldn't obey? That is a good question. Because he knew. He knew we couldn't obey, but we didn't. We tend to forget sometimes that we can't save ourselves. We forget that by ourselves we can't be holy like God. God needed to show all of mankind, all of history. Remember, the rules were not his rescue plan. The rescue plan was already in motion because God knew we would need rescuing. He knew and had promised Abraham that out of his descendants, one would come that would bless the whole world, one that would be perfect, one that would fulfill every single law. One man to live a perfect life that we couldn't live and take all the consequences that we wouldn't survive. Jesus. But Auntie L, it's no use not to do the, the right thing, except the whole bacon thing. <laughs> something I, but sometimes the, I do the very thing I plan not to do. He'll never be a holy one. Oh, no, God will. That's where you're wrong. You remember that there was the stain of sin. That feeling that Rodwell has that he'll never be a holy rhino. That he won't, that he'll always be guilty. But you remember that Jesus came to fulfill every law and then do a big unfair exchange. Give us his holiness while he took all our blame. We are justified by grace through faith, remember? Jesus said that he, we get his holiness. You are a holy rhino, Rodwell. Me? Jesus also said that he would free us from the rules themselves. We don't need many of the ritual laws because we are made not holy, not by what we do, but by what Jesus did. And then remember, we also spoke about the power of sin. That Rod was right, that sometimes when we try and do right, we still make bad decisions. And that's why during our life, in our process of, remember, sanctification, we'll become more and more like Jesus over time. And eventually, we'll even be free of the effects of sin of other people's sin. We wouldn't live in a, in a world full of sadness and heartache. Don't you look forward to that? Oh, what a sweet day that will be when we're with him. 
and we'll reflect him perfectly and we won't even struggle to do the right thing, to obey him. Oh, wouldn't that be a celebration? The biggest party ever! That's right! No rules? No rules, no need for them, Joe. All of us acting out of love and wisdom always. Nice. <laughs> and, loads, and loads of food, right? Oh, a feast! Bacon and donuts? <laughs> oh, it certainly will be a party. Most importantly, we'll be with Jesus himself. The way maker, the one who made the rescue plan to get us there in the first place. But more about that next week on the Beat.